This is the Michael K. Show podcast. Listen live weekday afternoon starting at 3 on 98.7 ESPN in New York. The ESPN app, the TuneIn app, or on your smart speaker. Hey, Alexa, play 98.7 ESPN. This is Robin Roberts, and the Michael K. Show starts right now. Take it away, Michael, Don, and Peter. Thank you, Robin, and a good afternoon, everybody. This is indeed the Michael K. Show. We thank you for joining us on this Monday, uh, January 24th, 2022. Michael K., Don LaGreca, Peter Rosenberg. We're part, but we're together for the next three and a half hours. The other 20 and a half, that's your responsibility. And what else is there to talk about but probably the best football weekend of all time? And you could do the research you want, but there's no way that over a stretch of four games – that a populace had been any more uh, engaged in those games and the way they ended, four walk-off games, three field goals, one walk-off touchdown in overtime by the Chiefs last night, and it was exhilarating. It really was. I mean, what an advertisement for the NFL. I'm sure the ratings are going to be through the roof. Uh, They were just amazing. It was an amazing brand of football, and as I tweeted out uh, last night, uh, it's actually quite telling. When you watch games like this and the high level of skill that's involved in these games, and then you realize the absolute dreck that has been put on the field for the most part of the last decade by the Giants and the Jets, it's, not, it's like it's not even the same sport. It's like it's not even the same sport. You watch the, the fluidity of the offense, the, the, the originality of the plays, and then you watch what the Jets and the Giants have done for the last 10 years, albeit that one year for the Giants when they lost in the first game of the playoffs, but just it's it's embarrassing to think the brand of football that we've been subjected to when you watch what we saw over the weekend don and peter it it was it was it was so telling i want to celebrate that but it also made me think about how bad the football has been here over a decade yeah hit us with that one stat what was the one stat you just gave us off the air um because that bills and the chiefs scored 25 points in the final minute and 54 of the game yesterday the giants scored 26 points and the final four games of the season combined. Unreal. Well, yeah, that, that tells it, Don. And, and just specific to the Giants, and, and I, I hate skewing negative here on such a positive weekend, but since you, you open the door, on both sides, you think about the Giants screwing up. I mean, they could have drafted Josh Allen. Yep. And apparently, Ben McAdoo wanted Patrick Mahomes. So there was a chance that either of those two quarterbacks could have been Giants. And that's where it's at. I mean, I know it's a coaching league, and certainly coaching has a lot to do with it. But when you have a quarterback, the world is your oyster. It's right, it's right there for you. Every game is now winnable. When you have a quarterback, when you have a clue, when you don't have a quarterback, then you have to have like this unbelievable, amazing running back like Tennessee thought that they had going into their game. Or you have to have an amazing defense like the Ravens did in 2000 or the Bears in 85. Or you have to have – you know, a, a blocked punt or something amazing on special teams to balance it out. Otherwise, it's mano a mano, your quarterback, my quarterback, let's go. And that's what that game was yesterday. So I know there are people, oh, I love defense. I love defense too. My favorite, you know, giant teams were all based on defense. But just the back and forth, what you could do, I could do better. But you know what, Don, what, it, what yesterday's game showed us, you can't play defense and stop these quarterbacks the way the rules are right now because both the Chiefs and the Bills had really good defense, and you knew that they could not stop the quarterbacks. They couldn't. Now, obviously, they, uh, the, the Chiefs suffered a blow when they lost uh, Tyron Matthew uh, early, and it showed, but there's no way these defenses could have stopped those quarterbacks. Those quarterbacks are otherworldly. Well, you cannot touch the wide receivers. It's a wide-open offensive game. And however, however, for all the people, and we're going to get a ton of calls today, that the Bills got job because of the overtime rule. Josh Allen deserved to answer Mahomes. You can't allow them to get in field goal range with 13 seconds to go. You can't do it. I want to pay all the compliments and all the accolades to McCown and that chief offense. The Bills defense screwed up. You can't leave Kelsey wide open like that in the middle of the field. Two plays, and it ends up being a chip shot field goal, guys. And what and are you the guarding the sidelines for? Squib kick or short kick. Like, so the Bills don't have a kick coming to me. The fact that they kicked it into the end zone, number one, and number two, I'm sorry. Your defense is supposed to be good. It's supposed to be stout. 
I understand the rules are all against defenses, but no, they should not be able to kick a 47-yard field goal from their own 25-yard line in 10 seconds, in two plays. Can't do it. Sorry. That you lost met, you the game. I, you, I, I'm sorry, Michael. I, I was going to say, I was a little surprised that people were so quick to attack the overtime rule as if, as if we didn't know the rules of engagement going into overtime. Like, that's what it is. I don't know. I don't, I don't consider it unfair that he didn't get a chance. That's, like, not how sports work. What does that mean? It is a little unfair. I, I, I understand both sides of it. But remember, it happened to the Chiefs, too, against the Patriots, and they were squawking and moaning about it, too. Uh, I mean, the, the, the side that says it's fair, you go, well, just play defense and stop them. Impossible. You could not have stopped Mahomes or Josh Allen. So you know that the game was going to be decided by the coin flip. And Josh Allen called tails, it came up heads, and the game was the Chiefs. You just knew the Chiefs were scoring a touchdown. The only way that you would give the um, the Bills a chance is if it was a field goal. It was never, ever, ever going to happen. It just wasn't. So maybe you keep this overtime rule for regular season, and then you just play a 15-minute quarter. But Whoever's I, I... ahead at the end of the quarter. Because, you know, one thing that's unfair, too, everybody, let's say the Chiefs scored, right, and then kicked the extra point. And then the, the Bills... Um, they had a chance to, to, to get it back. Well, then they're playing with different rules than the, the Chiefs had. They're playing a four-down game, not a three-down game. So there's nothing that's inherently fair about it because once you would have the go-ahead touchdown and the other team right. would get the ball back automatically, they'd have four downs for every single uh, time they, they, um, they had the ball. That's not fair either. You're playing with different rules. No, I, I just... I just think that we all look back at the last play. Like, like whenever there's a bad call, it always comes down to the last play, the last thing that you remember. But you can't forget that their defense is on the field. Kansas City's got the ball at their own 25-yard line with 13 seconds left. And then you you let them get in the field goal range. I'm sorry, you had your chances to I mean, win that game. Re- realize, uh, you get a sack there, the game's over. They basically could have ended the game. It's not like the defense didn't right. have a chance. They weren't capable players. See, that, there are a see, lot of capable players on – Buffalo's a great defense. See, that's the point. Is that like he, like, like you make it seem like the Bills were not given a chance. You were given chances. You had 60 minutes to prove that you were the better team and could not do it. And then, all right, it comes down to a coin toss. Okay, that stinks. But you know what also stinks? The fact that you were in overtime to begin with. That's the thing you can't get up from. I, I, I feel sick for Bills fans. I do. Because I, I would love to see the Bills win. It's new blood. That's a, that's a fun team to root for. So it's not like I've got anything against the Buffalo Bills. I'm just saying that the, all this conversation about how the game was ruined because Josh Allen didn't get the ball back. From a fan standpoint, without a dog in the fight, other than whatever our bets were and all our picks and everything, so yeah, I'd love to see him get another opportunity to go back and forth. I didn't want to see that game come to an end. But these are the rules we play by. Heck, it wasn't that long ago that all Kansas City would have had to do is get in a field goal range to win the game. And they've changed that rule, so at least it's better than that. But I'm sorry. You've got a lead. You've got a lead with 13 seconds left. And how do you kick it in the end zone? you got to come up with something to run some time off the clock. Because the timeouts are the key there. It was almost as if the Bills thought the Kansas City didn't have any timeouts by the fact that they kicked it into the end zone and the way they played defensively. How is Kelsey White open in the middle of the field? What are you, defending the sidelines? Kansas City didn't have to worry about getting out of bounds. They had timeouts. And you know what? That's a key thing to point out, though, Don, isn't it? Because did you, do you guys, the end of the Green Bay game, I, I was like, where did Green Bay's timeouts go? They, they, at both the end of the first half and the end of the second half, they had no timeouts left. Meanwhile, Andy Reid had everything sitting there. So if you did get 13 seconds in this crazy shootout of a game, when you have timeouts, 13 seconds is, is a totally different thing. I got to ask you one thing before we continue on with this, Peter, and it was, it was bothering me um, all of yesterday. I didn't bother you, but I wanted to ask you on the air. How's Ballard Wallard doing after that? I was with him on Saturday. <laughs> Why would you take joy in somebody's misery? That's yeah. sick. Um, I can't. I can't say it was a great day for him. He's well, had you a know tough- why? He led you out the deep end. We'll get into the numbers of our pick segment later. But you got one point from the Packers all year out of a possible ten. They completely messed you up. They, they were terrible. And that was because year. of the Ballard effect. Terrible. Terrible. Ter- I mean, listen. 
I truly, guys, you realize that th- until the Bills game started, and it was clear the Chiefs would at least be in that game, right? I just didn't have a positive thing happen at, at, in the entire playoffs. From the second, the uh, second, the first game started yesterday. Tampa Bay, L.A. And by the way, isn't it crazy that we barely, people are now barely discussing the end of the Bucks rams game, which was almost as psychotic yeah. as the Bills-Chiefs. Now, I will tell you one thing, and I'm glad you brought it up. And we'll, we'll, we'll cover all four games that were played. The, the two games on Saturday and the last game yesterday, they were classic games. The Rams tried to give the game to the Bucs. Everybody wants to, like, anoint Tom Brady further as if he needs more anointing. Now, he, he obviously had the drive that tied the game, right. but the, the game was handed to him. They, 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 they had four turnovers. Cooper Cup dropped the ball for no reason. Uh, it was uh, Akers uh, fumbles the ball. It, it, was like, it was almost like it was drawn up in a bad script. So, uh, I mean, as great as Tom Brady is, and I love watching Tom Brady play, that wasn't his yeah. comeback. That was a fallback but, by the Rams. But when you see that happen, you saw it happen to the Falcons in the Super Bowl a few years ago, it, it's almost like, Peter, Tom Brady's like Tyson like he, or, or, or Tiger when, when Tiger's lurking on Sunday just a couple of strokes behind. I, I just wonder if you think about that. Like, do the Rams play differently if it's any other quarterback in the NFL? But because it's Tom Brady, all of a sudden you get the yips just when you have a chance to put him away. Here's here and here's the one place I'll disagree with you, Michael, and everyone who was saying that it was a giveaway by the Rams, and it was. But what still made it Brady esque and amazing was that all day long they did not have it going on offense. You could just see they didn't have it. They were not good enough. He remember the final when it looked like the game was over. They they had a chance to pull within, uh, try to cut it to seven, with like five minutes left when you still reasonably thought they could compete, and on a fourth down, Brady had tons of time, found no one open, and threw it to nowhere. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. He just chucked it to the middle of the field. There was no one there, and I just thought, man, everyone is draped. If they're not on top of Brady, everyone's covered. So I will say, even though the Rams handed it away. The fact that he found a way to hit Evans for that touchdown and late in the game started finding a way, it still was Brady magic to me. Well, it was Brady magic, provi- but, you know, the guys that provided, you know, provided the top, uh, top hat and the cape were the Rams. He, he would not have had the opportunity to, to exercise his magic if they didn't just give it away. It was amazing to me. Yeah. It was a fun game to watch. The fumble Ma- they, before the half, they just gave points away. Yeah, oh, huge, huge, unbelievable. Huge. They should have blown him out. And also, it proved positive. Just look at the two Super Bowls against the Giants. You put pressure on that dude, he can't move. He can't slide. He can't get out of the way. He can't. And I'm not. that doesn't make him uh, not the GOAT. He's the GOAT. I, I, I yeah. readily admit it, but that's the way to defend him, and they were all over him. Getting Von Miller for the, that, I mean, they're, they're really tough. They're going to be really tough for the 49ers. But if they keep making mistakes like that, they won't. Well, now, the 49ers have their numbers, so we'll see how that yeah, works. It's amazing. Out. Um so let, let's talk about the one thing that everybody was talking about, the 13 seconds and then the choice of a squib or kicking it not in the end zone to, to have time run off. There is some risk in that, guys. Mm-hmm. There is some risk. First of all, you've got a great returner back there for the Chiefs, so you never, ever know. And then if you, if you kick it and for some reason it goes out of bounds, then they're starting out at the 40 with 13 seconds left. There's a lot of things that could have gone wrong. In retrospect, obviously you want them to take at least six seconds off the clock, and they should be practicing stuff like that. But kicking it into the end zone, you giving him the ball at the 25, three timeouts remaining, so he's got three plays to make. What did he need, 40 yards to get in the field goal position? It's it's not as cut and dry, Don, as everybody said. Well, just squib the ball, because squib the ball, you could get the ball on the 40 then. Both come with risks. Now, and, and that's the conversation that, that Romo had at the moment with Nance and, and Boomer Esiason talked about it after the game, too. You, you got to squib. You got to short kick because you got to get time off the clock. But as you said, you squib it, kicks the wrong way, goes out of bounds. No time comes off the clock. The ball's at the 40. And then all you need is, what, like 30 yards for an attempt. That, that's one play from Holmes. Because remember, they had their timeouts. So they're going to get a couple of plays, maybe three, depending on where the ball is going to be because of the timeouts. So getting rid of the time was going to be important, but the squib 
goes out of bounds. What if one of the guys early get the ball? Like, let's say they get it at the 30, 35, maybe even the 40-yard uh, line. The clock's going to run, but because the player gives himself up, you could be looking at the ball at maybe the 35 to 40, depending on where it's recovered, right. with, with 10 seconds to go. So he's probably a little worried about that. The short kick, where the ball goes to the 10 or the 5, as he's returning it, time is going to come off the clock. But what if he returns it for a touchdown? So Then you get killed for that. Then you get killed for why did you allow him to return it. So I still think both analytically are less likely than what Mahomes did because with 13 seconds, guys, your own 25-yard line, forget about how poorly the Bills played it. The way this sport is with pass interference, you know, just a couple of attempts you might find yourself to get in the field goal range. So I want to reduce their number of attempts. So by squibbing it or short-kicking it, I'm taking time off the clock. I want to reduce Mahomes' opportunities. But by kicking it into the end zone, you're guaranteeing him at least two plays. Yep. And you saw what happened with those two plays. So to me, the worst-case scenario is Mahomes with with two plays, with his skill set, and with the way that they call penalties on defense, that to me is the worst-case scenario. That's why kicking in the end zone – was the was the poor choice and and by the way this is not Monday morning quarterbacking the second it went through the end zone I was I was flabbergasted I you know my parents don't know football very well although that speaks to how good yesterday's games were because they were completely dialed into both and I was explaining to them why that move didn't make sense you, you just can't do it with the timeouts and Patrick Mahomes you are so much better getting getting that down they could have easily with the right squib kicked on gotten that down to they had one play if I if I were an NFL coach, I, I, and I I thought about this all year, I don't understand why they just routinely kick the ball out of the end zone. Why would you allow an offense to have seventy five yards to deal with rather than eighty five or ninety yards? I would have my kicker always kick the ball to the one or two yard line and then cover the kick. Kicking it out of the end zone and giving twenty five free yards is 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 mindless. Well, it's, it's, it's mindless. It's, it's an art that's not appreciated. You're right. No, Drop it depends it at how the good your line. special teams are. And well, you the mean Bills like the have Packers. A good special teams? Oh my! God. They allowed a good a punt return, but I, I guess that's the thing is if, if what are we saying today if that gets returned ninety five yards for a touchdown? How do you let them do it? What what but, time what time today, Michael? Do we? I don't want to do it now. What time today do we just get to crush Aaron Rodgers? Oh, real soon. I'd say in the four o'clock hour. Okay. We got three and a half. Remember, because we got Knicks on ninety eight seven, Rangers on ten fifty. So we got to get it in. But I think in three and a half hours, Peter, we will have time. time. But I don't know if I ever remember a day where there was not one game being played that affected the market we're in. And I think we all knew today. This, these are the only stories of the day. I mean, it was truly one of the most special weekends of football. Uh, uh, I don't. Is there a game that comes to your mind, guys, that was more fun or better to watch than last night's game? No. Well, all four of the games were, were exhilarating well, to watch. Well, that's why this is the greatest weekend ever, because I can't imagine you're going to get four walk-offs in one weekend, in one round of playoffs. It just can't happen. And I understand there are people that are purists and they love defense. And, and was, was Chiefs-Bills a perfect game? No, not by any stretch was it a perfect game. But for somebody who's watched football for 45 years and just watched sports for 45? Yep. Mm-hmm. I just want to see things I've never seen before. And you can't tell me you ever saw anything like that before, where you saw that many opportunities in that short a period of time, where there were two separate occasions where the game was over. I mean, the Bill, you, you saw the Bills are celebrating, and why wouldn't they? There's 13 seconds left. But, but, <laughs> that's, how often do you see something like that? So I know we always live in the now and everything's an instant classic, guys. But tell me you were not – how how many two-day periods in the NFL have entertained you to that level? In any sport. Think about that. How, how many, how many two-day periods – think about it. In any sport could entertain you that way. Well, you'd have to have – like in baseball, basketball, and hockey, Michael, you'd have to have four game sevens in a 48-hour period. Yeah. That never happens. And have them all be classics. All right? Is it possible in the NCAA tournament where the two final four games are both classics? Well, now double that. So you get to the Elite Eight, right? So I guess there could be 
two like, like the four games where each game ended in overtime on a final shot. Oh, and by the way, one of the games a team like comes back from ten nothing down with like three seconds to go. You know, something crazy like that. Like that's the level you're talking about. It just can't happen. It was as it, it it really was exhilarating. I don't know any other way to put it. And I, I every six months I'll give this spiel. <laughs> that's why you come back. Sports kicks you in the teeth over and over and over again with lockouts and people getting arrested and things like that. You come back for weekends like this because you can't get that kind of exhilaration from any oh. other scripted um, series or anything on TV. That's why rights fees for sports is so high. That's why they pay through the nose for the NFL because there's nothing like it. Those are the things. Those are the games. Those are the moments that keep you coming back after all the nonsense that you deal with. Well, Michael, it's as simple as this. In, in a country that's divided in every way, shape, or form, every, everybody, no matter what you believe, could be entertained by that game. No matter who you voted for, no matter what color you are, no matter what state you're in, that we all feel that same exhilaration of just seeing something that is just purely entertaining like that. A buddy of mine made a $100 uh, four-team, four-leg parlay for games over the weekend, right? 13 seconds away from winning $1,275.62. Can you imagine how many people – I mean, Don and I both had that game. Don, it was a three-pointer. It was a huge loss for Don because it's uh, the difference between two-and-a-half behind me and now four-and-a-half behind me with limited games left to play. That was gigantic, and, and, and Peter got one point, but – And it eliminated – well, and if Don, if I get that wrong and Don wins, I'm eliminated. I'm permanently in the last place. I'm now, I still now hold on to a shred if Don and I go opposite this weekend. You have to go opposite in both of them, right? Oh, that's right. It's going to be an interesting week of trying to read read what Don's thinking. You know, wouldn't it just be the right thing to, like, make the pick that you think is going to happen, you know? Sure, sure, sure. But, Don, really, with me right well, now, does that make sense either? No. I know, but but it, we had this conversation last year when I, I, I pretty much knew where Michael was going to go, but I still wanted to pick with my heart. Yeah. And it ended up costing me, and I finished in last. But I, yeah, I won't do but that. I, no, but but I thought about <laughs> it. And like, but, that, but that's not in the spirit of the picks. The sure. idea is to pick sure. who you think is going to win. Right. And so I So if you end that. up not losing because you just purposely went against my pick, even though you don't believe in it, then what are we doing? It is Try. really, if you think about it, Donald, it's one of the great collapses of all time, what we've seen from Peter. The fall from first place to be embedded in last place, very, very unlikely and, to get out. It's unbelievable. But it is interesting, even though he's still mathematically alive, but what scares me of climbing out of it is he has had a horseshoe hanging out of his butt all year. And for him to still be alive on the way that game ended last night tells me that <laughs> anything know. is inherently possible with this guy. Yeah, you by never way, know. By the way, I still and I still have a like a somewhat significantly better record than Don. That's how bad my allocation was. Don's like the allocation master. The allocation. Well, yeah. I, and I could say this, and I think it will agree. I, I I would pick the Bills again. <laughs> that you game would just was, have them squib. It was whoever got the ball last. Let's be honest. Now, um, talking about the overtime rules, I, I saw this broken out. There have been 11 playoff overtime games with these rules. And the team that won the coin toss won 10 of them. I think the only one that lost was uh, New Orleans. Now, it didn't mean that you won on the first drive. I think seven of them won on the first drive. Three well, that's of them the ended key. up winning the game, yeah. But th they see, that's the key. So, of 11, seven won on the first drive. Right. God, but... Here's the one thing that I will say. The reason that we went to the new rule is because it's so easy to kick field goals now. These guys are so good. So is it fair that I can lose on a 60-yard field goal? Did my defense really fail if I let you get a lousy 20 yards and get in the field goal range? Are, Speaking are, of a are touchdowns getting to be that level? <laughs> where It's just so easy to score a touchdown now that it's it's unfair to give the team the opportunity to win on their first possession. Is it that level yet? Speaking of field goals, have you ever seen a guy come up that short on a 47-yard No, that's, that was odd. I mean, if it was 57, I could get it. It was dead on. It was short at 47. Even They're going to have a problem with him now. then. Guys I are know. kicking 60-yarders and hitting the net. How about Robbie Gold? He's, he's what, 104? He's never missed a postseason you know, um, kick. Justin Tucker's the best. 
but Gold's close. And he's and been the on Bears, multiple teams. Bears, Bears released him, too. He's been on and a bunch you, of teams. And if you see the highlights of him kicking during the opening of the game while the Packers were coming out yes. on the field. And then they showed another highlight today from an earlier game, Peter. Uh, he was um, he was kicking in, in the middle of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders um, performance. Like I saw that. I literally, saw that. right Over, in the middle of yeah. I but like he had five feet on either side where the, between a, a full dance team. Right. He's a lunatic. He's pretty good though. All right, yeah, so well, let's hear from you. Friends. Somebody that good to be on, you know, th- this is his third team. He, he was he was a giant briefly. I, I don't remember really when. Just what? uh, in t- lo, 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 lo. he was he's been, he was the Bears pretty much his entire career. He was he was a giant uh, in sixteen. Wow, I'm and then no he went to San Francisco. So he's on his yeah. So he's on his uh, yeah. So San Francisco. So three teams. So another That's, great move by the Giants. One eight hundred nine one nine. Three seven seven six. By the way, they interviewed Brian Dayball for the second time because obviously they're not going to the Super Bowl, so they're allowed to. Looks like he's the early favorite, and it's going to have to be a late, um, late show of speed uh, from Brian Flores or Dan Quinn to overtake Dable. But boy, Dable's offense looked great yesterday, just great. Although it does have Josh Allen. All right, so we'll take your phone calls. An unbelievable weekend of football. It's Kayla Greco Rosenberg and you on Yes and ninety eight seven ESPN. Thanks for listening to the Michael K. Show podcast. Hey, buddy. Hey. Catch the show on demand wherever you want. Just subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. My love. Well, it's getting closer and closer to Big Game Sunday. Keep it locked in for your chance to win the ultimate box pool in 98.7's Super Box Bonanza presented by FanDuel. Qualifiers will each receive $20 in FanDuel credit and access to our invite-only virtual Big Game Preview with Chris Canty, Peter Rosenberg, and Chris Carlin on Friday, February 11th. Plus, pick your super box for a chance at incredible prizes like a year subscription to Disney Plus and ESPN Plus, Adidas Sports Center sneakers, Beats noise canceling earbuds and more. Wow, the gifts are great. Oh, and oh yeah, don't forget about your chance to score cold hard cash, giving away up to eight thousand uh, five thousand dollars. All brought to you by FanDuel and your home for the hookup, ninety eight point seven ESPN. Pretty good stuff. Game time. Brought to you by Telemore Dew Irish Whiskey. Oh, sure. Got the Knicks and the Cavaliers in Cleveland tonight. 7 p.m. start. So our pregame starts at 6.30 right here on 98.7 ESPN. And the Rangers are hosting the L.A. Kings uh, at the Garden. 7 p.m. start. 6.30 pregame on 10.50. Puck drops at 7. And that can be seen on ESPN+. Plus. That's game time. Brought to you by Telemore Dew Irish Whiskey. During the big games this season, enjoy a Telemore Dew, the original triple blended, triple distilled, and triple cask matured Irish whiskey. Remember when it's game time, it's Tully time. Please enjoy responsibly. All right, so here's the thing I want to ask about the Kansas City game. So when Tyreek Hill scores that touchdown, he's clearly taunting. How's that not called? As he's running down the sidelines, he's giving the, you know, Wagging his finger at the defender, you're not going to catch me. That is the very definition of taunting. I thought there was a crackdown on that this year, yeah. and they would. How could you not call that? I mean, the easy answer is going to be you. You can't call it in that situation, but it's it's a rule, you, right? You so I call. guess you can you can taunt then in that situation. It means right. very weird, but it was very glaring too. He was. Oh up. yeah, that's a very definition of what taunting is. It. Uh, by the way. Some of the most impressive taunting I've ever seen. You liked it. I, I was blown away by it. I couldn't believe he knew at that point when he threw up the peace side that he was getting in. Well, he has such accelerating speed. It's, it's amazing. It's, yeah. we, we really do. We're going to have to at some point here. Now it's four straight uh, championship games. We're going to have to really start putting a little context around this Mahomes, Kelsey, Tyreek Hill trio in terms of where they sit all time. It's, that is a tough task for anyone. Yeah, and Andy Reid's completely changed everything around too, right? The guy that couldn't win the big game, and who knows, he might win two Super Bowls in three years. Um, very quick baseball note. The two sides met today. Remember, the owners made their proposal. Um, I think it was last week or the week before that. They met today at 1 o'clock. They met for two hours. The players um, turned down the proposal that the owners gave, made a counterproposal. But the positive news that comes out of that 
is that they're meeting again tomorrow. Because time is ticking right now. It's less than three weeks spring training is supposed to begin. So as long as there's a sense of urgency and there's sort of a line of demarcation, I think that's good. The fact they're meeting tomorrow, you can construe as positive, but we'll see. I have no information other than what's being reported that they're meeting again tomorrow. But I would I would interpret that as somewhat positive, that they're not going to wait and spend two weeks looking over this proposal. Well, here's an idea. Why don't you just meet every single day to have a deal? Why don't you meet and not even leave a, leave a room? Right. Just lock the door, and you can't come out until uh, until you come up with a deal. Can't get or, fed either. Or, you know, you could keep doing this. And while everyone's spending their time talking about how football is the greatest sport ever, and even if you don't have a vested interest, any human being can rejoice in the glory of it, the only story going on with baseball is how they can't agree to figure out the money for these rich people. And that's how it's going to be perceived, so get to work. Well, not, you know, because football had such an unbelievable weekend, they are allowed over these next couple of days to, to really negotiate in private, in anonymity. Nobody cares right now. No. It's like... Come out and tell us this is a deal, and then we'll we'll rejoice, and then then we have mm-hmm. baseball. Let's go to uh, Frank in Sparta. Frank, hey guys, uh, something I want to I want to bounce off you. Okay, uh, the Chiefs Bills game. Uh, okay, so thirteen seconds, right? So obviously, I, I think they should have squibbed the kick right and get the clock going. Mm-hmm. So you you squib it, maybe you take another two three seconds off the clock. Now you're down to ten. Ten seconds out there, say that give 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 it to them at the thirty-five, whatever wherever it, it may be, right? Mm-hmm. They go out for a pass. How many how many receivers you figure went out? Four. I yeah. think it was four. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you grab every one of them? Take the holding penalty. It's five yards. But how much how much time went off the clock by by doing that? Wow, I you like run the way a play. You how, what is it? Another five, six, seven seconds. All right, five yards. Now you're at what the forty? Now you got. Three seconds left, five seconds left. Now you gotta now you gotta go Hail Mary. I love but this guy, Don. If you happen to miss the hole, okay, then somebody could obviously break loose because you're you're talking about grabbing the receiver while the ball's in the air. No, grabbing right at the line, he said. Well, but all right, even worse, because now if you grab at the line and he deeks you, now, is there anybody back there? The, now you get now you might get a situation where you give up a big play. If you're going to put everybody at the line of scrimmage to, to hold everybody, if somebody gets loose, then you might only have a couple of guys back. You could really give up a big play. I mean, it's great in theory if it's executed properly, but, Michael, if one of those guys miss at the line, mm-hmm. Then you might give up an eighty, you know, you might give up an eight, a seventy-five yard touchdown on that play. But and, it, it, think about it: how could you miss? I mean, you just throw them down to the, the field. Every single guy that's right, you're right there, right in front of them, and you throw them down to the field. It's holding. But you'd have to be pressed against the, the line yeah. to grab them right away. And, yeah. And, you know, these are athletes; they could miss. I, I just like. What if you thought. don't drag them down? What if what if what if, what if you, you you pull at them and like Kelsey gets loose and and now he makes the catch and there's nobody to, nobody to get him because right. you're going to have to have somebody there to hold every. Okay, so you're it, so you'd have to bring every safety in corner like you're probably playing dime at that point. So you have to bring all six guys at the line of scrimmage to grab the guys that are all going to go out. If somebody got loose, Michael, it doesn't feel like in this, the spirit of the game. Well, I don't think that should matter. It's about winning the game, right? That's what I say, Don. That's why I'll be finding a way to pick against you this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a good answer, Peter. All right, we're going to talk some um, Packers. This and, is it? Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll continue to do oh, you, you, you think the hour went too fast? It's a lot of stuff to handle. It's just a lot going on. I mean, obviously, all of this is still up for debate, but we, we definitely want to talk a little Packers just to annoy Balor. At least that's the way I do the show. No, I'm all for that. No, I'm just, I'm I believe this hour pissed. went by like a blink. There's a lot of stuff to talk. It's not, it's not one of those stretch hours, you know? What are we going to talk about? Should we talk oh. about Peter? Should we talk about Peter's dogs? No, no, no. There's or real the fact sports. That Peter's doing the show like in like in the dark. Yeah, it looks like Rod Serling is like producing <laughs> your spot. You have lights in that house, Pete, or what? I, I this the lighting in my old bedroom here is not great. I oh. admit it. I'm sure uh, that, you know what, but, at some point. Yeah, that's right. When you were young, you loved it. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, you know, had that music. Dun, 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 dun. What's that? I don't you know what it. that was. 
Oh. Wasn't romantic. Well, the romantic music that we have that I don't know where it is, so I'm not going to play it. Oh, God, okay. Me right. and my old high school sweetheart. You're right, in this room. right. The one that you buried yourself over. This music. Because Peter was the high school Rivera. Oh, he could close? Oh, yeah. No, I'm our, not sure. <laughs> our names are carved into this bed somewhere. Do you know? Did you see? But speaking, of, well, we'll do it with the, when we when we talk Packers. But we, okay, uh, we'll do that in just a moment, right here on Yes and ninety eight seven ESPN. Thanks for listening to the Michael K Show podcast. Well, that's awesome. Looking for more access to the show? That's right, man. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at TMKS ESPN. The Michael K Show. It's actually quite telling. When you watch games like this and the high level of skill that's involved in these games. Mahomes looks to throw it. Pump faking right side. He wants it. A comeback cut. It is caught by Kelsey. Touchdown, Kansas City. And you realize the absolute dreck that has been put on the field for the most part of the last decade by the Giants and the Jets. It's like it's not even the same sport. Lobs one. Left sideline. It's going to be an interception. Easily picked off by Devin McCourty. The Michael K Show. He has had a horseshoe hanging out of his butt all year on 98.7 ESPN. Welcome back to the show, everybody. So we talked a lot about the Sunday games. We'll go back one day to the uh, the Saturday games. Green Bay loses a heartbreaker. And, um, you know, we talked about it on Friday. And we got some pushback that it's, it's, it's the Packer defense and stuff like that. Rodgers is a great player, blame his lack of success in the playoffs on the Packer defense. Well, the, the, the reason the Packers lost, per se, was because special teams, ranked 32nd, lived up to it. They were awful. But he couldn't do anything, anything. You got to put a lot of that on Rodgers, too. All right, this is from the Sporting News. Rodgers is 11-10 and 10 now in the postseason, 0-4 against the 49ers. That's the lowest winning percentage, 524 among NFL quarterbacks, with at least 11 playoff wins. Also, Green Bay was 13-0 and at Lambeau Field from 1939 to 2001, a streak that encompassed the entire Lombardi era and a chunk of the Favre heyday in the 1990s. Well, since Michael Vick beat the Packers on January 4, 2003, 27-7, the Packers are 7-6 in home playoff wow. games. That includes NFC Championship game losses to the Giants and the Buccaneers, and then Saturday's loss. And by the way, Rodgers is five and four in home playoff games. That's unreal. Well, and and here's the thing that's scary: it's not like they're like winning a division at nine and seven and getting a home playoff game in the wild card. This is a team that that has been one seed coming off buys, the thirteen win teams, one seeds. That's the enigma that has been the Aaron Rodgers Green Bay Packers, especially recently. It almost seems like they're more affected by the cold than the other team. Well, it's become a thing. I, I think I think football players enjoy playing in that building because they're, they're no more historic buildings anymore. Soldier Field is a shell of itself now. All these buildings are new and gorgeous and retractable domes and field turf and all that. Lambeau's like the last of the great buildings in the NFL. And I think, much like Madison Square Garden, I think opponents get pumped up. To, it's like a rite of passage. Let's go to Lambeau and play in zero-degree temperatures. So I think the opposition gets all fired up for it. Can we, can we start being fair about something, though? Sure. This, this Aaron Rodgers legacy that we've all been sort of watching and seeing where it's going to go, it, it, this is... He's he's now taking this one's major damage. Th- this one was bad. They they were really unimpressive. I mean, there was late in that game. I know the field was in poor condition, but somehow the 49ers were able to move the ball down the field, get in the field goal range, and win that game. And it seemed like there, Tom, there wasn't a basic slant the entire second half. No real offensive strategy at any point to me. Like they happened to do well passing the ball to the running back out of the backfield, but never established the run at all. No. They seemed to like continue to try to beat that at, into the ground and see if it could get going. It never did. And ultimately, when you have a guy who's this good, who also in this year was so insufferable, okay? And let's be let's be fully transparent. This is a show. We, we tell the truth here, right? Mm-hmm. Try. 
He had to give an interview that day in ESPN in which no matter what your political position is, whether you think what he said was dangerous with regards to COVID or if you think it was just a fair opinion, however you view it, he had to be literally completely divisive to half the country on the day of their biggest game in which he goes out and lays an absolute egg. It was a terrible day for the Rodgers legacy. And people can roll their eyes at me and say, oh, oh, oh Peter, injecting your politics, it doesn't matter. But it does matter. Because if you're if you're going to be uh, 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 someone who alienates a lot of people in the public that because you're choosing to, as he said so eloquently to Kay Adams before the game on Sunday, to not give a belief anymore, you've made that conscious decision. Okay, you better be awesome yeah. on the field. Because if you're not awesome on the field, now you just look like a jack wagon. This was not a, a, a great season. For as impressive as his numbers were, Michael, it, are we going to be talking about Aaron Rodgers getting the uh, – the, the Jeopardy job after his career now? Well, forget about his performance. And, and we were all, you know, we were texting all weekend, all of us, um, on a group text. And, and, and I said, his post career um, opportunities, I think, are going to dry up. Yeah. Because wherever you fall on this political spectrum, he's alienated half the country. The, the country, I think we can all agree, is half and half. That, I mean,. The United States of America, it kind of makes you wonder how united it is. 50-50. Whichever side you fall on, it's 50-50. And he has decided to go heel. He's decided to go up and in and be divisive toward one half of the country. Now, the other half will embrace him, but corporations don't take somebody and make them their spokesman if half the country doesn't respect him. Again, not falling on either side. He was divisive in what he said. And he didn't like that that Biden had said, you know, tell you saw a Packer fan and said, tell your quarterback to get the vaccine. And he thought that was rude. And then he took a shot at Biden again. I it, he freedom of speech in this country. You could say whatever you want, but there are ramifications. No, there are. And, and now, there are if, 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 and if you're a great player, though, you maybe you rise above all that. But he's not showing to be a great player in big situations. But also, too, and there is a segment of the population on both sides of the aisle that just don't want to hear politics with their sports. And Peter's right, day of the game, right? So so it just becomes who he is. And when you look at the quarterbacks that are that are getting the attention, certainly Rodgers gets a lot of attention. I mean, it was, it was almost awkward, Peter, right, watching that game yesterday where, like, Mahomes throws a touchdown bat and Mahomes is in the very first commercial coming out, and then Rodgers during the Green Bay game. I mean, these are guys during commercials. But for the most part, especially the post-careers, I mean, the Mannings are the fun-loving guys. And they're getting commercials after their career is over because they're fun and everybody likes Eli and everybody likes Peyton, right? Because well, uh, they're apolitical the and they're politics? just fun to be around. Uh, those are the guys that get the spots. Rodgers is getting it because of the attention he gets on the field. But once his career is over, Peter, I don't think he's going to get these kind of that kind of love. And, well, and it's amazing, too, because you said it. I mean, you remove the politics from the things he says. Let's say they weren't political at all. His tone is snooty and nozzly. That's his whole tone. Like, they do the State Farm commercial where he's hosting the game show. It's a play on the Jeopardy thing, and he has this really sort of somber, sarcastic tone. They're playing into who he is. He comes off that way. He always comes off as snooty. And then, you know, if, if, if you want to be, let's just keep going with, with Rodgers, the performance he's decided to put on this year. You know, he told Kay Adams on Sunday, I don't give a bleep. He cursed throughout every interview with Pat McAfee every week. He just doesn't care anymore. You know, you're the you're not you're the leader of a of a football team, a publicly owned football team, idolized by children. It's one thing in a frustrating press conference. Listen, I don't beat up players. I I, I said the other day, I was amused um, when when Kyle Kuzma dropped an S bomb, a, a horse S bomb, in the middle of his presser because he was really f- uh, frustrated and furious. Rogers curses constantly. He just doesn't even care. Nothing about him cares. So you've decided to have this sort of rebel image, your repugnant hair, and your stupid theories that you want to espouse. But on top of that, when the big game finally comes and off of a bye against a team, let's be real, the poor Packers defense, San Francisco did nothing. They did nothing all day long. You had one drive the first three minutes of the game. You did nothing after that. Yeah, that after that one drive, you thought they'd win 35-7. to seven. I And know. then there was a fumble on the second drive, and they lost it. They lost their composure. They couldn't do it. 
And they never if you recovered. watch the game, if you watch every second of the game, gorgeous Jimmy G tried to give it away. He tried yeah. to throw three picks on down and outs. He just didn't have any zip on the ball. And the Packers didn't make the interception. They were pick sixes right there. They never, absolutely right, missed opportunities there. And that fumble on the second drive, they were moving the ball again. They give the ball back to San Francisco. The, the Packers, it's, they never seem to recover. And then, at the end of the first half, because after, after the second drive where the fumble occurred, they did nothing offensively from that moment until the final series of the first half. One big play, they get the ball into field goal range, blocked. A blocked field goal and a blocked punt. Listen, you obviously can't put this whole thing on Rodgers, but you also, it's lazy to put it completely on the special teams play. The special teams play was garbage. I've never seen a in a playoff game, guys, a blocked field goal and a blocked punt, and a blocked punt for a touchdown in that spot. It all Peter, was very Peter, unique. But they wouldn't have Rogers had a punt the ball. They wouldn't have had a punt the ball if Rodgers didn't go three and out there. They would never have had a punt the ball. Listen, he could have run out the clock on that drive. That's what Aaron Rodgers is supposed to do. I know. I, I, I am not – I'm definitely one of those guys that hate to put wins and losses on quarterbacks because there's so many other things at play. He gets one. But, you know, you're, you don't have to play that much better than the opposing quarterback. You know, like, like I said, I, I, I give San Francisco credit. Special teams are a part of what makes a team great. And they blocked the punt and they played well defensively and all that. But they're going to the championship game and getting really nothing out of their quarterback. So all Rodgers had to do was be decent. And they win that game going away. Yeah, and he's he in his own ballpark, and, and he should be okay with those elements. And he's I, got weapons. I wonder if he's in his own head because he's become such hey. a villain and a heel. Sometimes that hey, weighs on you. Michael, the people that say they don't give a bleep, they give a bleep. They give a bleep. Always. The people that don't care, they don't, they don't do these things. He does all these interviews. He cares so much what people think. Let me and tell so, you yeah, what. That if, allows if, it to get in his head. If State Farm had to redo that, they wouldn't. They wouldn't sign him. He, he's too divisive now. Do you remember? Do you remember when uh, a few years ago, the story came out a few years ago that he has absolutely no relationship with his family. Right. And everyone was sort of like, well, you never know. You know, his brother was on the reality show, and uh, who knows? And uh, you start adding things up together over time, and you go, I don't know if he's a great guy. I don't know. And the thing is, people will look the other way on you not being a great guy because, as Michael right. K. likes to say, more often than almost anything, winning is the great deodorizer. But when you get a huge spot like that on national That's TV and lay an egg, now you start to remember all of the things. that, Dude, say, you, you can think I have whatever differences I have with Aaron Rodgers' uh, opinions. I was rooting for him hard Saturday night. I put that all to the side to watch this guy play football and try to get a win. And, and, and when I really wanted to get my two-point play, he was garbage. And in, and some some of the um, things that he's espousing, you just scratch your head, and then all of a sudden John Stockton comes aboard and goes, hold my beer. <laughs> it's unbelievable see, what John Stockton said. I didn't see what John Stockton well, said. Well, Gonzaga has taken away his tickets. I mean, he's Gonzaga legend because he would not put a mask on and have a mask mandate in their arena. And then he gave an interview to a Salt Lake newspaper and said, uh, nobody's going to force this vaccine on me. I think it's all nonsense. And there are 150 professional athletes that have dropped dead after getting the vaccine. Who are these 150? I mean, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar just destroyed him. He said, "This is what makes people look, that makes people think that athletes are idiots." He said stuff like that. Wow. He said 150 professional athletes have dropped dead after getting the vaccine. Again, I'm going to need some names. That's... Who are these people? I, I must have missed it. I do a four-hour right. talk show every day. I don't remember the 150 athletes. Deep. The fact that they were able to cover up these 150 athletes who died from the vaccine and only Stockton found out about it on his uh, different websites, that's that's impressive work to cover that up. Now, talking about um, quarterbacks that lost a game, Oh, step right up, Ryan Tannehill. Wow. You could have the greatest running back in the world. If you, if you don't have a quarterback that could throw. That's it. It kills everything. Tannehill, I mean, Tannehill finally stepped forward and said, I can't do this. And you're wasting a really great team, a really great team, and you're not going to the AFC final because of it. It's it's unbelievable how bad he was. Let's, let's be real, too, guys. Well, you know, he had a, he had 200 yards, a touchdown, three picks. That game, of course, was Michael and I, our three-point play, so I was very invested in that game. Tennessee's a better team than Cincinnati. Yes, that's, that's that. That is a that is 
I think he really did answer the question. Tannehill has somehow managed to hover in this is he good or is he not for years and held this job. But you're right, Michael. This is a Super Bowl winning team potentially completely saddled with a quarterback who's not good enough. And, it, and just it's breaking all of the, the cliches. Defense wins championships. you got to establish the run. you got to get good quarterback play. guy. You have to. you got to get something out of your quarterback. And that's eventually going to be the down, downfall of San Francisco. Is are, are they going to get at some point to lift that Vince Lombardi trophy? So many things are going to have to break San Francisco's way unless they get quarterback play. And that's what happens with Tennessee. So you've got the bowling ball with knives, right? And you got this great defense. Your quarterback's got to give you something. And he, here's Cincinnati. He gets sacked, what, nine times in the game. And yet, what did he do? 348 yards. He played well. He put him in a position to win. They got the quarterback play. They were able to overcome a lot of different things, including you know a, a really tough turnover that led them back in a game. But only the second quarterback in the history of football to be sacked more than eight eight times or more and win the playoff yeah. game. Donovan McNabb was the other because of the way that he played when he wasn't getting sacked. Did you? Can you? I mean, you watched those nine sacks, right? The thing that stood out to me. I wonder if you guys thought the same thing. Never wind. Never threw the ball in frustration. Never, ever fumbled the ball. Not right. once. One time he switched it, uh, it uh, as he was going down, switched it to another hand so he'd be less likely to fumble. He's amazingly tough, that guy. Look, consider this. He got sacked nine times in that game. Tom Brady was sacked 22 times the entire year. Nine times in one game. And, and you know what? If Cincinnati wants to turn him into Andrew Luck, and the kid Carr, when um, Derek Carr or David Carr, you, you better get your offensive line together. You're going to ruin what could be a transcendent yeah, career. I'm sorry. That's the thing that's eventually going to kill him, is that he's like literally getting beat up when he's when he's trying to play. But you know, there's a lot of quarterbacks out there that never get sacked. But how many times would a sack been better than what the outcome was? Right. Because he got picked off or, or, or did something silly, avoided the sack, but still put himself, uh, put his team in a really tough position. Uh, he he took those sacks. He didn't fumble the ball. You know, a couple of them he lost way more yards than I think he really wanted to. But we don't know what the alternative would have been had he thrown the ball away. Maybe mm -hmm. he would have gotten picked off. Maybe he would have fumbled if he got, got sacked earlier. And so – yeah, sometimes the better play is the is the sack. But they got the quarterback play. They got a few breaks, and, and, they, and they win the game. But this is a sport that is – I know you got to have good defense. I'm not saying I don't want to have a good defense, Michael, but the one thing you cannot get away with is poor quarterback play. You just can't live with it. And in the playoffs, you can't get away with poor quarterback play and bad kicking. And, and the, the Bengals have a money kicker that they picked in the fifth round. I mean, that guy, that guy drained that kick as if it was no big deal. Like, no big deal. He's a no baby. Pressure. All, all the guys that made the kicks, it, it was amazing. Although I, I was holding my breath with Gay of the Rams after he went short on 47, but he drilled the game winner. Three walk-off field goals and one walk-off touchdown. What a weekend. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. No, that's all you can ask for is just the, the games to be meaningful, to see things you've never seen before. And it was just a – yeah, as disappointing as I think Wild Card Weekend was with a lot of blowouts and poor play. This was were, bad. This, these, this erased it. This erased it. Every, and really put a lot of pressure on the next couple of weeks. Because how, how do you match what just happened on Saturday and Sunday? Can, can the two championship games live up to this? I think, Don, that over the next three days, you have an inordinate amount of pressure. Because Peter's lying back right now, and he's saying – Let's see if Don tips his hand who he likes with the Bengals and the Chiefs because he's going to pick against you. He has no problem going against what he thinks the, the outcome is going to be. I like how you act like you wouldn't do that. Michael. No, I've never done it. <laughs> Boy, never, you never killed me it. for doing it last year. Yeah, you thought Don was stupid for doing the opposite. Yeah, but I've never done it. I've never been in that position where I had to do it. <laughs> oh, please. Well, not, okay. And, and by the way, I'm so lost anyway. Does it really matter at this point? I, I'll, I, I yeah, I want to take whatever the opposite of Don is. That's a better than me actually making a choice. What's happened to you exactly? It's hard to say. I mean, at least <laughs> this weekend. I mean, hold on, let's, let's be fair for a second, okay? Yeah. Let's be fair for a second. Okay. I should have been three for three this weekend. Yeah, right. But you no, were no, one no. for two. Hold on, hold on. But, but should I have, honestly, for, for Tennessee should have beaten Cincinnati. 
Ryan Tannehill had to work to lose that game. That was the right pick. Boy, boy this they sounds should have, just like Don when he loses. I'm sorry. And, I did and the then, same and, picks over again. And then the Packers, a blocked punt at the end of the fourth quarter? Or that's an easy cover. They they, they were sitting there with the seven-point lead. All right, this is where you're going to lose me coming up this one. But then, yeah, that was a toss-up. I mean, that was why. But by the way, the Chiefs were my one-point play because I knew it was a complete toss-up. Come on. No, but the but the the, the Bucks were a bad play. I didn't play the Bucks. Oh, well, what am I thinking? No, that's right. You didn't play the Bucks. I didn't play. The, yeah, I, I had the Rams. Okay. Exactly. It felt like well, I had the. Bucks but that's because, also part of it that you didn't. <laughs> right. Right. Now, right, what right. I'd like to do, and, and I did like this, the Rams. This is going to. I mean, it's going to make some people sad, but when the the Green Bay punt was blocked you were sitting there with ballard wallard what was the sound that he emitted was it a curse was it a moan i, I hey. want to get in that room it was remember the drop yeah there's hey. gotta be worse there's gotta be worse than that i don't know um, why you this is not a good person in you well, i'm not, he, I'm not a real he, big fan uh, of ballard that's why no i listen and i get that that was a really tough segment on the air <laughs> all right yeah but do you, you you just completely lost all sense of what it is to be a fan? No, oh, you should. That you can relish in this guy's misery. This, this he's suffering today. Loves our show too. No, he loves you. If you left the show, he would never listen to me. No, and he regularly tells me, "Man, you guys really do the best sports talk I've ever heard in my life." He <laughs> loves the show. He's, right, he's right about that. But what was his sound? Was no, it, I I don't. It was silence. How great and was it when the ball went up the air? No one knew where it was. I know, right? It was endless. It was up there for ten seconds. <laughs> And he didn't make a sound. He just I just saw him die inside. And then yesterday, <laughs> the text that I, I've gotten a long, like, three-paragraph text from him every, like, six hours since the game where he thinks more about it. He takes more in. Not too bad. I, I think I'd say well, he, might be, he might be ready to move on from Aaron Rodgers. But other than the bad segment, and believe me, if we killed people for having a bad segment, Michael, we wouldn't have very many friends. There's a lot of people who have tried to kill this show. They were, we, we, including we all three of them. us. Yeah. Some did weeklies. But just because his name is Ballard and you're yep. sitting there giddy, that's, that's just a bad person. Yep. Honestly. Yeah. Well, this isn't for fun. This is truth. You're this just, just a bad guy move. His, his, just his girlfriend had bought him. Um, that's also some, breaking news. Some Wisconsin, <laughs> some Wisconsin bratwurst. So we were eating brats. We were having a good time, man. That That's bratwurst probably came right up when that punt was blocked, huh? Hey, by the way, Kid Rock with special guest Foreigner are coming to the PNC Bank Art Center on Saturday, August 27th. So be listening in the 5 p.m. hour today for your chance to win a pair of tickets. That's right, more giveaways brought to you by Live Nation. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. at Ticketmaster.com. Later on in this hour... Giving away a box in the Super Box Bonanza as well. We get your phone calls next. 1 800 919 3776. Kay LaGreca Rosenberg and you on Yes and 987 ESP. Thanks for listening to the Michael K Show podcast. Well, that's awesome. Looking for more access to the show? That's right, man. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at TMKS ESPN. The Michael K Show. It's a fait accompli. Everybody does picks during the football season, every show, with the exception of our morning show. And I, I still can't imagine why Pietro would be too weak to do it. Emotional. Hey, Don, how's it going? It's Rick DiPietro and, uh, and your best buddy, Dave Rothenberg. I, I don't know if, um, if it's something I did or if it's something Dave did, but we love you. It's very strange. The fact that you're no. picking because Rick can't deal with the pressure is startling to me. For somebody who idolizes and reveres Rick, I don't get the it. The Michael K Show. You have no guts! On 98.7 ESPN. What a weekend. What a weekend. Uh, at the end of that game... I almost wish that the three of us could have gone on the air immediately. There was so much to unpack, and coming on the air at 3 o'clock, a lot of it's been unpacked already. But uh, you had a rebel in, uh, in the excitement of each and every game where there's so much on the line. It was, it's just, uh, it was amazing. And, you know, it obviously was at a crescendo with the Bills and the Chiefs. How about this stat? That was tweeted out by Andrew Siciliano of the NFL Network. The Chiefs and the Bills have played three games in the last 365 days. The total score, Kansas City 100, Buffalo 98. Wow. So we are going to see Mahomes and Allen for a long time. 
hopefully for 10, 15 years. Just amazing. Now, one of the big um, points of conversation over the weekend was, is Tom Brady going to retire? I, why is that even a point of conversation? I could end up, you know, old takes exposed, could pull up this tape, but the guy has said over and over he wants to play till he's 45. He's 44. You think he's going to stop one year short of what he said? And he had 5,000 yards this year. He had one of the best seasons he's ever had. He pulled off an unbelievable comeback, helped by the Rams in aptitude, to pull his team even. Why would he walk away now? Unless Giselle said, you know, that's it, I'm done. But Mm -hmm. she knows who he married. She married. The guy loves playing football. He loves the competition. He's still good at it. He'd be walking away at the top of his his powers. I I don't get it. I don't get it. Remember, he did this with a team that was short. I mean, the loss of Werfs was gigantic. Do you realize I, I gave the stat earlier? He had 22 sacks. He was sacked 22 times this season. And with the injury of the offensive line in the playoff games, he, was, he sacked seven times in two games. Right. So this guy knows his team's healthy, and they get back Godwin. They're a really great team. I'm sorry, they really are. Why, oh, yeah. why would he retire? Well, because – you know your own body, and I'm sure it's a lot of work to get ready for every single season. And you do run the risk of what if it's not that great of a year, and then you you walk away, you know, one year later than you should have. Then he should have retired after last year, winning the Super Bowl. But look, he went out there and he might win an MVP and throw for five thousand yards. Right, which would lead you to believe, why would you retire? Well, there's that in between, but- Michael. Of do you want to take the chance of him going out there and maybe not having a great season? And then that means he's got to come back to try to have another great season, and then you end up looking like the guy that should have retired. There's always that feeling of walking out on top. Now, he had the best chance of doing that last year, but I guess he felt like he had something else to give. But every year it probably becomes a little bit harder to get ready. But, Michael, the way Michael is is saying this, it's like there would never be a time to leave because he might never take a big step. No, but he said, he said for the last 10 years I'm playing till I'm 45. So all of a sudden he's going to fall short of what he predicted. He's got a company that hinges on the ability of him to play at a late age. A health company called TB12. I think Why wouldn't he take that to 45? I, I think he will. Yeah. But I think if he didn't want to, it would still be proven that it works. No, it obviously it does, although Guerrero's been caught in some sketchy things if you if you read that book by Seth Wickersham, and that's why Belichick wanted him out of the facility, but Tom Brady swears by him, and certainly he, he doesn't look like he's aged. Since he came from Michigan, he doesn't look like he's aged, but when a guy is at the top of his powers, and if you read that book and you realize this guy's obsessed with football, obsessed with the competition, obsessed with getting ready. Don said some people don't. It takes a lot to get. He loves it, and he is he – is, labored over the fact every day what am i going to do when this is over how am i ever going to fill that hole well you, you fill that hole when you have to i don't think he's going anywhere i, no, I, I could don't be think wrong so either but he does play the game oh yeah you know he loves the that, that's probably why he loves the drama will he or won't he uh but you know to your point well if you just came off a season where you might win the mvp why wouldn't you just assure everybody i'm coming back but he doesn't, so he either likes the drama or does realize that there may be a time. Listen, he's got a family. I mean, I, I think they what they think matters. It probably takes a lot out of them, sacrifice-wise. They, I'm sure Giselle's ready to move on to the next stage of their life. I think she was ready five years ago. Right. So you know, I'm sure he has a conversation with the family, and every time he tells them, I'm going to go out and play, he, it might – he might die a little inside when he sees the look on his family's face. Like, okay, we got to go through it again. So I, I don't think that makes him die a little. He's a Evidence very, he's a suggests. very self-absorbed dude. Well, I, I think he's focused, and which is fine. I mean, I'm not knocking him. His yeah. whole life of, is dialed into being great, and he even said it's it's cost him time with his family. That's his that's his reason for living, is to be great. He works but, toward it every single day of his life. But he's eventually going to have to move on, Michael. You're describing a very sad existence because the day is going to come where he's going to have to walk away from the game and he's going to have to go dare to be great someplace else. Plus, it's also a sport that sometimes, you know, the best efforts aren't enough. You know, you get hit the wrong way. You suffer a concussion. Do you want the last play 
to be carried off the field, that becomes more and more of a risk every time he goes out there and plays. You know, it, it's not just how great he is, but we, he is a, a pocket quarterback. You know, so uh, every time he gets hit, it probably hurts a little more than it did the year before. So you run that risk, too, of going out there and playing. Yeah, it'd still be great. You still can do it, but there's still somebody out there that's 100 pounds heavier than you that's trying to separate you from the ball that might end your career. Now, the other question, quarterback-wise, is is Rodgers going to want to stay in Green Bay? And the word was that he was infinitely happy during the season, that he was having constant dialogue with the front office, with the coach, really liked it there. But then after the game, he, he left it open. I think he also enjoys all the speculation. But he did say he didn't want to be part of a rebuilding team. And Matt LaFleur was asked today, are the Packers rebuilding? And he said, there's no plan for a rebuild. Okay, that's easy to say. But I believe they're $30 million over the cap. And Devontae Adams is a free agent. If you keep Aaron Rodgers, I don't know how they do it. I mean, they got to restructure a lot of contracts, let people go. Yeah. And if, if – if you got to let go of uh, Devontae Adams, does Aaron Rodgers want to stay? Uh, I no, think no. he's played his last game with Green Bay. No. That's an interesting point because here's the question. Is there a world in which you think he stays without Adams? No. To me, not unless they got some sort of exact uh, substitution. And I don't which, think there's a, a world where Adams stays without Rodgers. Now, I wonder if they'll give Adams the Rodgers rate. Right, it's still a very winnable division. You know, Detroit's a long way away. Chicago's still, you know, a little better, but they still, you know, the quarterback, what's he going to be? Minnesota, uh, I still think they can go out there and win the division even without Adams. But he's got bigger fish to fry. It's not about going to the playoffs, not win- about winning a bunch in the regular season. He wants to win that elusive second championship. Where could he go? Would Tennessee part with Tannev- Tannehill? Would he go there? Boy, that would be interesting. Winnable division team that looks like they would be vastly improved at quarterback with Rodgers there. Weapons. Good receiver. A running yeah. game. Good defense. I, I I also wonder if he's become somewhat toxic. I, that I... And as great as he is, I mean, I guess it's all according to what part of the country you're in. I mean, would the New York Giants want him? Well, I mean, he fits the bill of if they decide to try to win now, I think you can get a, a couple of more years after Rod, uh, with Rodgers as your quarterback. But from the political standpoint, Michael, if, you, if you're winning, it's fine. You know, he would ruffle a few feathers, I'm sure. There'd be people that would be aggravated. But if he goes out there and the Giants are competing for a championship, I don't think anybody's going to care. I, 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 I've been thinking the same thing about Washington. Because he's it's it, his name gets floated a lot around here, and uh, I don't know. You know, I, I said uh, by the way, Deshaun. Um, Watson. Yeah, I said Jackson. That the the, the 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 fifth quarterback in that draft was Lamar Jackson. So I apologize for the mistake. Yeah, and I said I, I said McCown instead of Mahomes. Yes. So I, I uh, had no. I in that moment I had no idea what either of you were talking about. <laughs> well, why don't you correct us? Jump in. I was so confused. But why would you? But when you know it was wrong, but you could see where the mistakes made. No, I, that, that's the thing. The, the combination of the mistakes made me think I maybe I misunderstood the entire conversation. Well, no. I definitely heard you say McCown earlier, but we were rolling at that point, and I didn't. I, didn't, I mean, I, clearly, I know it was right. Mahomes and not McCown. But you know, when you're talking extemporaneously for three Things and a half happen. hours, you're going to slip up. You're going to make mistakes. And I how, think. It's and just by the fun. way, talent wise, how can you not confuse Mahomes and McCown? Did you see the Texans want to hire McCown as a head coach? I would. But they they don't want to do it unless there's another team that interviews them for the head coaching job because they would look really dumb if they're the only team that thinks he can be a head coach without well, any coaching experience other than the high school. Don why, Don, why did you jump it? You would, too. Well, just because he was able to swindle $10 million out of the Jets to hold the clipboard. <laughs> he must be some sort of a genius. I was being sarcastic, ton okay, of cheek. Good. But l- listen, I think he'd be an outstanding offensive coordinator. Um, but if you believe he could be a great head coach, don't be influenced by let somebody else interview him. That's weak Absolutely. sauce, man. Absolutely. Have some right. conviction. Well, I'd ask her out, but I, I want somebody else to ask her out first. I don't want to be the only one to ask her out. Weak. Show me now, something. All right, so the big topic of conversation is is the last game of the four, um, whether or not 
um, you would have, you know, squib the kid. You don't have to squib it because I think squibbing presents some problems. But kick a ball that has to be fielded. Don't boot it out of the end right. zone. And Peter King in his Monday morning quarterback column uh, got a text from a coach and said, you must have them return the ball and have give them just one play to get in the field goal position, not two. Because if you kick the ball off and it's a return, that's at least four seconds. So that means he's got one play to get into field goal position. And, and, and at that distance now, how can you get the ball far enough down the field in one play and – have enough time to kick the field goal so they have the timeouts right so it was it was 13 on the kick let's be generous and say it's nine so let's say they catch the ball now here here, let's if the receiving team if the chiefs catch the ball at their own 10 yard line you they would immediately take a knee right right so are, are you saying that you can't do that in less than four seconds because if you catch it at the 10, at, would, do you immediately take a knee? Or but do you if you try immediately to take get... a knee, think about that. Then you've got to go 60 yards. Right. So you're saying you likely run for 10 to 15 yards, take another right. few seconds, and now you're down to 8 seconds. So if you're at 8 seconds from even the 30-yard line, you essentially need to travel the ball 40 yards in and, and 6 seconds, 6, 7 seconds. To have a second or two to kick the field goal. All right. These guys are so good that I think you'd be able to place it at the five. Now, the, the risk you run is they return it for a touchdown. So, that, analytically, what are the odds that he returns at 95 yards for a touchdown as opposed to getting in field goal range in, 13, in basically 10 seconds? I think the odds are that. Patrick Mahomes can get into field goal range. Of course. With 13 seconds and three timeouts. Now, it's a bad job that the Bills, you know, allowed that much yardage. I thought maybe it's like a 60, 65-yard field goal attempt. That's what they were talking about during the game. Like, you'd be lucky if you got, like, you know, one of the great kicks of all time. It ended up being a chip shot. That's how poorly they played it. I have to think of all the options. The one they chose was the worst. All of them have pitfalls. But the one that I think was the more logical, as, as illogical as it was, the more logical one was that Mahomes would get them in the field goal range with 13 seconds left and three timeouts. And, and Butker is, you know, arguably one of the best field goal kickers in the game. He misses an extra point and a field goal. Unbelievable. That and, and and the crew was putting him pretty much on Mount Rushmore, and he missed a, he missed a now, field goal, and then he he climbed going off the upright. It was unbelievable. Now here's the problem with the squib, because if you see how the Chiefs were lined up, they just showed the replay on yes, they've got guys standing at the 50. So if you squib it poorly and they grab it at the 50 and immediately lay down, two seconds come off the clock, Mahomes has the ball at the 50-yard line with 11 seconds to go. That would be like the worst-case scenario of the squib. Even but when worse you're thinking you squib, you're thinking like an onside kick squib. So just kick it over that, their head. The first right, line then you just like, 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 like you pooch it up squib. in the air. But then if, if you do that, then it's coming down at around the 30 where it could be returned to the 50 where you have a chance at a Hail Mary. The better thing to do to me is kick it like to the, to the 10. That gives you a little margin for error if they let it drop. Because that's probably the way the Chiefs are going to play it, right? Do they take the chance on the return, or do they let it drop at the 10 and hope it rolls into the end zone? Like, how do they play it? Because it could kick sideways and go out of bounds, you get it at the 40, or it rolls into the end zone, you get it at the 25. Well, how the do you clock, think the Chiefs play it? Does the clock start if the when, ball just hits the ground? No, no, it starts the second a Chief touches it. So, so, if, so if it does hit the ground, Don, and, and bounces to the five, and they grab it, they can save, they can lose no time. But then they're backed all the way up. Because if you watch every kick, they all go into the end zone, right? Where does the ball usually go when it hits the end zone? Just goes right out of the end zone. I get uh, most times it seems to bounce forward, not back. So they'll probably let it land at the five yard line and hope it bounces into the end zone. And yeah. if it doesn't, then he would grab it and try to return it, I guess, to the 10, but it would take some more time. I still think that they force them to make that decision. And the worst-case scenario is, all right, it bounces into the end zone. At least you tried. This one, he just kicked it right out of the end well, zone. Well, here's all you need to know when it comes to weighing the analytics between kicking it off and, and, and a potential touchdown return versus Mahomes getting into range. 
when you guys realized they had the timeouts and the 13 seconds for the 25, you immediately thought, wait a second, they can get in the field goal range, didn't you? Dude, I still possible. thought it wasn't enough time. I mean, they could, but I didn't think they'd be able to do it. And Don I, brings up the best point earlier. They're, they're guarding the sidelines. For what reason? They have timeouts. They left the whole middle open. You just That's how play Kelsey got up. that chunk of yardage. That's the thing is, do, do not get it. Just play it straight up. I don't want it, that old adage that uh, that Parcells said that he got from uh, from Bobby Knight. The prevent defense prevents you from winning. But it, there's a lot of truth to it. Just play straight up. Do what you do. Put some pressure on him. Force him to throw the ball quickly so he can't get it downfield. And just hope your good defense wraps him up. But I don't know what they were doing. How's Kelsey, the biggest weapon they have, wide open, where he's not only able to catch the ball, he runs 20 yards. How is that possible? Just play straight up. Don't get in your head. Don't get prevent. Don't guard the sideline. Play it straight up. You're a good defensive team. Yeah, Mahomes is probably going to beat you over time, but just make sure that in, in the two plays that he has, he's, he's not he's not kicking an easy field goal. At least make him like kick a, 20, a 65-yarder. All right, Let's, the first play, probably a little bit too much, but to the 45, but this, the, the, that's maybe. seven seconds. Look at this last play from their 44-yard line. It's Kelsey in stride. I wonder if there was such fear of the ability for someone like Tyree Kill to beat them and win the game on one play. Well, uh, I mean, that's what happened in the Ram game. I never thought that they were going to be able to get it. I, I thought that, that that game was going to overtime. That was a terrible decision by Todd Balls to blitz. What are you trying to get to the quarterback there? For what reason? You're so afraid of giving up the big play. That you give up the, the big touchdown, play. But, but you end up allowing so much in the middle of the field that they're able to get that chunky yard. The, the fact that, what was it, a 48-yard field goal? Oh, my God. Again, I, I think it's a different conversation, guys. If Suckup goes out there and kicks a 63-yard field goal, all right, well, then what are you going to do? But it ended up being a – you knew he was going to get that field goal. Also, I mean, can we take a minute to appreciate that they not only got Mahomes but like and Hill, but how special Kelsey is too? I mean, we're not even talking about the, the game-winning touchdown grab. I, he's a – in this market, guys, we don't get anyone – Anyone with one player with half the talent of the guys that they have on this team. The whole weekend was a clear illumination of how bad a brand of football we've seen for a decade. It's embarrassing. Well, There's nothing that's nothing that we have seen has been that exhilarating. And you don't know for a fact, but a lot of it is, is just look what a great quarterback can do. When you don't have a great quarterback, you don't. You know, oh, he doesn't have any weapons. But you know, maybe the maybe the weapons sprout up when you have a great quarterback. You know, for all we know, if if Kelsey and Hill are on the Jaguars for the last you know seven eight years, are we talking about them? But you get you play with Mahomes, then now, they blossom into you know uh, superhuman people like with Duper and Clayton with Marino. A, a, a caller earlier had suggested just hold everybody, have time go off the clock. And a couple of my friends sent me the rule, um, Article 3 in the rule book, intentional fouls to manipulate game clock. A team may not commit multiple fouls during the same down in an attempt to manipulate the game clock. Penalty for multiple fouls to run off time from the game clock. Loss of 15 yards in the game clock will be reset to where mm. it was at the snap. Boom. After the so, penalty is enforced, the game clock will start on the next snap. So, it, in other words, nope. Right. And you also, um, you also can't do a foul on purpose they can also stop the clock and give you 15 yards that would be the worst case scenario so it's it's a, a very delicate balancing act we just can't do it just i mean right, just Ryan the fact that you, even, you would even think at that point michael that you'd have to manipulate things to stop a team from getting in a field goal range at their own 25 with 13 seconds to play what an ending. What a weekend. We'll talk to Ryan Clark about all of these particulars when we get back right here on Yes and 98.7 ESPN. Thanks for listening to the Michael K. Show podcast. Hey, buddy. Hey. Catch the show on demand wherever you want. Just subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Kid Rock with special guest Foreigner. Coming to the PNC Bank Art Center on Saturday, August 27th. You want to go? 
be the first mm-hmm. caller right now at 888-987-ESPN. Score a pair of tickets. Brought to you by our good friends at Live Nation. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. at Ticketmaster.com. So I think it was the third or fourth quarter of the Packer game. And who do they show in the stands? But A-Rod. Hmm. Wearing a Packer hat. Obviously freezing his buns off. And I just texted him. I said, is it as cold as they say there? He goes, it's unbelievable how cold it is. And then the next day, he's sitting courtside at the Minnesota Timberwolves game. And all I could think to myself, a lot of people have different opinions on this guy. He is living his life. He's living his best life. Yeah. The guy never sleeps. He's always everywhere. Never, ever lets an opportunity go by to not, like, experience something. It's, a, it's amazing. I give him credit. I, I don't know if I I'd have the energy. The only thing I can't appreciate at all is doesn't sleep. What do you mean? I just find it. I find it weird when people who can do anything with their life and have already accomplished it, like they've already accomplished so much, right? When they when they still don't prioritize rest, I think they're so fundamentally missing one piece of the yeah. puzzle. Oh yeah, because well, we don't know if he doesn't rest. I'm just saying he seems like he's always on the go. Yeah, but you right. don't know if he actually doesn't sleep. No, I have no idea. But of all the things I'd we'll like find to out find time for, sleep's one of them. Oh yeah, I do enjoy a good sleep. Well, that's also that to me. That's wealth. That's when you're, that's when you're living life. When every day you go to sleep when you want and wake up without an alarm oh, clock, yeah. you just get up and live your life. Now, now, what's the Packer vibe there, Michael? Because he says he's wearing a hat. So I, I understand didn't, I Lambeau. Didn't that's one that. of my bucket list places. I want to go to Lambeau. But this is a kid that what were number thirteen because he was a Dan Marino fan. I think he was probably freezing his butt off and and bought a. A ski cap of the okay. Packers. You, I, I don't think you could have got because somebody dug up a picture of him in a 49ers jersey. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got to talk to Alex when the K Rod vehicle started. He didn't know he'd need a winter hat at the game. Listen, that's all part of K Rod. So that's what you tune. You know, that's the thing about being bald. I'm not forgetting my hat. I'm not like, oh, what do I need for the game today? I don't know if I'll need a hat. It's going to be zero and snow. Now, uh, this is an interesting question, Don. So Lambo's on your bucket list. Yes. And I've been there. It's neat. But if somebody called you up, right, mm-hmm. on Saturday morning, I get a private jet. Let's go to Lambo for this game today. And you know it's going to be zero degrees. Would you go? Yeah, because that's part of the experience of Lambo. But I, you could some... also die. I mean, you're 61 I years old. I don't think there was anybody in that building. The 80,000 people in the building, no one died. Don is not 61 years old. You're actually 61 years old. Yeah. No, I'm not 61. Not yet. Well, soon. Very soon, actually. I'll be 53 in a month. But, no, I I, I would dress accordingly. But, Peter, you understand my point. If if Lambo's on your bucket list, going there, like, on Labor Day just doesn't seem to do it. You know? Well, then go to a lake in Minneapolis. I mean, you you, you want to see the, the, the stadium so you could see it warm no i get that and i would take that better than not taking it at all but part of the cachet if you will of lambeau field is the frozen tundra to go there in december to experience what it was like to see the ice bowl so if alex Tom called Coughlin's you up frozen face and like that's alex, the stuff alex called you up you would have been on the jet hey don you know you're my favorite lambeau field today you want to go and you say yes alex i'll meet you at teterboro yeah Wow. Now, I, I I like to think that that's not an impossibility. No, I don't think it's an impossibility. He does like you. Because we seem to get along. I, I don't know why he would reach out to me. But if he, if he was listening right now and the Packers had won, and he said, you know, Don, if I didn't have a, you know, a Ranger game on the next, uh, coming up Sunday and I was free, like I, maybe he would reach out to me and I would love to do that. And and listen, be in the suite would be optimal, but like if I had to be in, in the upper deck, yeah, I would do it. I could not believe that he was in the stands rather than in a suite. I mean, Fox was doing the game; he works for Fox. I wonder how many do they have a? What's the suite situation at Lambo? Oh, they, they built a lot. Oh, four. no, 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 no. Well, there's one whole side of the uh, of the ballpark that has suites now. Okay, so it's an option. Oh yeah. Maybe, but maybe he's like Donnie, but, wanted but, to experience. Uh, but I could see Alex wanting to experience Lambeau Field, a playoff game. It was snowing at one point, but that's football to me. That's beautiful. So if you're going to go to Lambeau Field, you can go 
in September and it's 70 degrees and it's nice and you're in your shirt sleeves and you're enjoying it. But are you really enjoying Lambo? I now, say Ant- nay. Anthony Greek, who produces the show on the simulcast on Yes, he was at the 13 Below Giants Packers game in 2008. Sent me a picture. So, yeah, and he's a better person for it. You think he is? Yeah. He I'm actually, sure he believes he, he is. He lost uh, his left pinky toe. No, he didn't know he lost anything. I no, don't no, think no, there's no. been anybody that's he's, ever even gotten frostbite. He, he lost use of his left arm because of frostbite. He there's still certain secrets. Like, what you got to do is you, you, you'll laugh. You got to bring some um, cardboard with you. What is that? For you, for what? You put the cardboard on the cement. And you put your feet over the cardboard. Does a really does a tremendous amount. Is that true? Keep, keeping your feet off the cement is going to warm up your feet. Yes, that's why I used to do that when I go to Giant games when it was really really cold outside. So bring a your shoes don't matter. Like if you have big thick soled shoes. No, like, it'll it'll matter, but it, it's also going to help you. But put a nice little cardboard down there. I think I don't you know also you should wear depends. <laughs> what what is this, like dumb and dumb? That's because you just know his history, <laughs> right? Wait a come on, guy. This is ridiculous. God, I'm not going to say anything to you guys ever again. You said it to our entire audience. No, that was one time. Well, you know what? One time turns into two, oh, turns listen, into four. Been plenty of times with Michael. How come you don't say it to Michael, who's had uh, Joey? Joey, remember that? Well, we I've ne- that but, but no, no. Here's the difference. <laughs> I've never soiled myself. You have. <laughs> I've made well, it that to was a bathroom. because Peter I've decided made it to do a marathon and end, <laughs> and I didn't have leverage when I got up. I was on one of those uh, director's chairs. Yep. Hey, things happen. That is true. They do. But all of a sudden, things now move. I got to go with depends. I thought you were doing like a Dumb and Dumber thing where you can actually, you know, urinate and, and warm yourself well, that, up. No, that's what I meant. <laughs> that is what I meant. I okay. didn't mean the other stuff. Why Apparently, is the dog barking so much today, Peter? I want to know. Well, can't you stick him out in the yard? You're at your home. You're at the homestead. Nice Why do they have yard. to be in your in your childhood bedroom? I don't get it. it, it it's it's. I'll, I'll do a better job tomorrow. He Rocky is because I guess we're not at home. Every time I leave him, he starts barking. And if he starts, that's why he's been with me the whole day. But when I try to leave for two seconds, he starts barking. And then Bear starts barking. And it, when I'm at home, it's not that big a deal because he he doesn't need to be with me every second. But oh my god! All right, let's let's take a brief time out. Let's Please. see if Rocky and Bear can destroy ENN as well. Got a lot to do. Kay LaGreca Rosenberg and you on Yes in 98.7 ESPN. Thanks for listening to the Michael K Show podcast. Hear more of Michael, Don, and Peter live weekday afternoon starting at 3 on 98.7 ESPN in New York. The ESPN app, the TuneIn app, or on your smart speaker. Hey, Alexa, play 98.7 ESPN.